Hello everyone, today I want to talk about the new upcoming character Moalani and hopefully help you figure out if she fits your playstyle and team composition, so ultimately if this character is worth your wishes. First of all, we are moving on to Netland characters and kind of similar to the Arkham mechanic in Fontaine, we will get something new called Night Soul, which all of the Netland characters have in common. It's a special state which they can enter when using their skills and during that time it generates and or consumes Night Soul points to either determine the duration of this effect or perform special actions. There's also a brand new mechanic called Night Soul Bursts. And it seems to be an effect that will just trigger when Netland characters deal Night Soul aligned damage. And it scales with the amount of Netland characters in your party, meaning it can happen more often the more characters you have from Netland in your party. And these new characters all seem to share similar passive skills as well, which directly relate to Night Soul Bursts. But they also have a fourth passive that is basically just there to make exploration and netland easier with getting benefits for their own personal movement skills. And lastly, one very important thing I unfortunately couldn't confirm so far is if the Night Soul effect ends when the character leaves the field. As of right now, I would assume it does not end simply because of the wording on the new artifact set. Now finally, Moalani's actual skills. Her normal attacks aren't too interesting, so let's skip straight to the elemental skill. When pressing it, she enters the Night Soul state and mounts her shark, and her normal attacks will be converted to bites dealing Night Soul Hydro damage. Aside from using bites, she can also mark enemies just by coming into contact with them, and this can happen up to three times, and each mark increases the bite damage. So you want to create marks and then follow up with normal attacks. So that's basically it, and you have the little display on the left side for the Night Soul state duration and bite marks. As for the burst, it's just a quick Night Soul Hydro Damage nuke, that's basically it. And the passive skill, again, to make it short, the first two are non-combat related, uh, the first one mainly relating to movement and Nutland, and the second one displays local specialties on the minimap. And then the actual passive skill, the first one, she can recover some Night Soul points by picking up Puffers, which will be created twice during her elemental skill, though I'm not sure if other characters can pick them up to enable synergy like between Nouvellet and Citrine, for example, with their water droplets. And the last passive skill, Moalani's Burst gains bonus damage when other characters use Night Soul Bursts. This can stack up to three times, and when using Moalani's Burst skill, these stacks get consumed for the extra damage. She seems to be a fairly simple character, you just press her burst and then surf around to create marks and to follow up with bites. Her attacks also seem fairly slow but hit very hard, so I assume it's perfect to set up big vaporized damage. We are in the pyro nation after all. Personally, I think playing these setup based characters that have this big payoff moment every now and then with a huge damage number is a lot of fun. Navia is one of my favorite characters for example, and I assume Mualani will feel very similar in that regard, but still uniquely different with her high mobility. One concern I have though is the passive skill that synergizes with Night Soul Bursts. If that is really important, it might create a rift between Netland and non-Netland characters. In 5.0, there are only three playable Netland characters, so we are kind of forced to ignore this mechanic to a certain degree, but as more of them unlock, this might turn out to be a little bit of a problem, where we always want to have like uh, two or three or potentially even four Netland characters in our party, which I think is not a healthy like design route to go down. And lastly, to make a little bit of a bold prediction, which might turn out to be completely wrong, Moalani seems to work well with Vaporize, Kinuchi's weapon seems to synergize with Pyro, and both of them have passive skills that really synergize well with the Night Soul bursts of other characters. To me, it seems like there are some clues pointing towards the Pyro Archon being a sub-DPS designed to enable at least these characters, and potentially all the new characters. Maybe they want the Archon to be this unifying factor for all the tribes of Netland, even in terms of gameplay. But again, that's just speculation on my part. As for the build, pretty standard DPS build, of course highest priority crit crit damage and I'm on a very budget build so you definitely want more than this. And then for her of course hydro damage bonus and she's an HP scaling character so max HP are the stats of choice. 
And then I don't think her bear skill is super important. She is mainly about her elemental skill, so I wouldn't invest too much into energy recharge. And elemental mastery, if you play freeze, you don't need it at all. If you play vaporize, it's definitely a lot of extra damage. You have like two to 300. Then she is a hydro HP scaling catalyst character, so very tough competition, but Nubelet taught us that the prototype Ember is an amazing DPS weapon for HP scaling characters, so definitely your best four star option. Otherwise, something like Mapamara or the Witsith can be good for vaporized teams, especially if you like to high roll with this weapon. And then for artifacts, I think it's pretty straightforward, HP in this slot, Hydro damage bonus in this slot, and crit or crit damage, whichever one balances, balances your stats better in the last slot. As for the set, I think Heart of Depth is actually really nice, but if you are like me and only have bad uh, pieces, then you might want to settle for something else. Of course, in the long run, the new artifact set will be the best one, I assume. But you could also play something like the Shimanawa set in the meantime. It's a lot of normal attack damage bonus, but it's obviously a little bit tedious to always have the energy drained. As for team compositions, Muolani definitely demands a certain amount of field time, so I'd say you best pair her with sub DPS and utility characters. And to my understanding, her Hydra application seems to be kind of slow, so she's probably not best to create like a million dendropods to play like Hyperbloom or Burgeon or something like that. So in my experience, she probably wants to hit hard with Vaporize, or maybe if you have someone like Rosaria build, you can play Freeze. But that's about it. So uh, Zhang Ling, Rosaria, Kazuo obviously for the utility and Sucrose for the same reason are the main characters to look out for here. And just to show you a sample Vaporize team, of course we have Zhang Ling for the off-field Pyro application to enable the Vaporize, alternatively we can pick Dia. Then we have Kazuo to enable his uh, damage buffs, but also to infuse his burst skill with Pyro to make the Vaporize from Mualani more consistent. And then in the last slot, uh, uh, instead of Kazuo, we can pick Sucrose. And in the last slot, we have someone like Bennett, for example. Of course, we get Pyro Resonance, which is very valuable for these two characters. And Zhang Ling also snapshots with her burst skill. And on top of that, she is very energy hungry, so having a little bit of a battery from Bennett is obviously nice. Well, Ani is an HP scaling character, so she doesn't benefit from Bennett at all, which is a little bit uh, tragic, but we could also play Zhongli instead for the extra resistance shred from his shield. And if we go for Zhongli to sustain our team, we can also aim for Geo Resonance. It's already fairly strong by itself, but with a character like Yunjin who provides a lot of normal attack damage bonus, a character like um, Mualani who does a lot of normal attacks will obviously benefit a lot from this. Then again, any Pyro sub DPS to enable the Vaporize. And instead of Yunjin, we can also pick this new Geo character. I hope she is. She works as a sub DPS if her Night Soul state gets cancelled if you switch off her, then this obviously doesn't work. But that would be one idea. I think Vaporize is definitely the best thing you can do with Mualani, but moving on to Freeze, I think this can also work out pretty well, mainly because all of these characters are kind of busted. Rosaria, best cryo sub DPS with a lot of utility in form of a crit rate buff as well. Everybody knows about Farina by now, and you also get Hydro Resonance. Both of these characters are HP scaling characters, so a lot of extra damage as well. And Gene to enable the uh, uh, fanfare points, and then also the Viridescent set. Aside from the Farina thing, you can also go for something like Constellation for Layla to sustain your team and get the extra normal attack damage bonus, and then pick any utility character like for example Kazuha for the extra damage, Yunjin for the extra normal attack damage, even something like Ayato on an emblem set sub DPS build for his burst skill with the extra normal attack damage bonus, and a lot of extra damage in general, and Hydro Resonance again. And of course, if you really wanted to, you could also throw in Bennett here for the snapshot of Rosaria's burst skill. And that's basically it. Um, I put Kinchi here for the Night Soul burst synergy, but again, I don't think it works. Uh, Kinchi himself can be used as a sub DPS, his burst skill kind of works pretty well for that. But again, I think the problem is Mulani's Hydra application. I don't think this would be a Burgeon team. You would just trigger Vaporize and Burning over and over again instead. Alright, we made it to the end. I hope this was somewhat helpful to figure out if this character appeals to you. I will get Mualani and try hard, so stay tuned for that. Until then, have fun and bye bye.